I've given Python courses for the past five years now, mainly at Max Planck Institutes and universities. And from the beginning, I've always recommended Anaconda as a package and environment manager. However, they've changed their pricing policy so that any institution with more than 200 employees needs to pay now. There are exceptions for universities. However, even if you are in a university and your PhD, for example, is third party funded, and even if just part of that funding comes from a company, you basically would have to pay a license fee of $600. Basically, all the institutes that I work for have responded to that by blacklisting the Anaconda servers in their firewalls so that no one in their network can install anything from the Anaconda servers so that they don't have to pay $600 per person per year. The question now was, what do we replace Anaconda with? Now, we could go old school and just use pip and vnv. They've been around since forever and they're definitely free to use and open source. However, they do not handle any non-Python dependencies. So if you, for example, want to link CUDA or C++ code or Fortran code with pip and vnv, then you cannot do that. Another problem is that if you're, for example, doing a matrix multiplication in NumPy, that doesn't actually happen in Python because that would be way too slow. But you have specialized performance libraries for that, MKL, OpenBLAS, and Accelerate. And it will depend on which CPU type you have, which one of those is fastest. So MKL is fastest on Intel CPUs, OpenBLAS is fastest on AMD CPUs, and Accelerate is fastest on Apple Silicon. With pip and vnv, you're locked into OpenBLAS. So if you have an AMD CPU, this is probably fine, but if you have anything else, you're leaving performance on the table. So the code will run a lot slower than it needs to be. This, by the way, is also true for all the more modern versions of pip and vnv. So there's pip and virtual env or pip env or poetry, but they're all PyPy based. So they all have the same problem, which if you're only doing web development, for example, is not an issue because you're never gonna use CUDA to do GPU computing on a website. However, if you're doing scientific applications and data science and stuff like that, this will be an issue. Next, Micromamba is the package manager that I wanted to recommend in this video. I tried it out for a week, I played around with it, and I think it's great because it's minimalistic, it's simple. So Micromamba kicks out Conda and replaces it with Mamba. And in principle, Mamba should be able to do everything that Conda can. However, that's only true in about 90% of cases. And one main issue is, for example, that PyCharm only has support for Conda. You can only make it work with a workaround. And again, I'm teaching mainly beginners. I don't want to spend the first two hour tutorial session just installing workarounds and hacking and configurations so that something works that should be working out of the box. So that is not an option. And even for VS Code, where all the other environment managers work natively out of the box, Micromamba needs an additional extension that you need to install. And even then, at least on Windows, it was a bit tricky to set up. Before we continue with Miniforge, just a quick heads up. In this video, we're going to compare these tools. In the next video, we're going to compare IDEs, so which program to use to develop Python code. Because the recommendation that I gave last year, JuberLab Desktop, it's not being developed anymore, so we need an alternative. So next video, we're going to compare IDEs. And then two videos from now, I'm going to show you how to set up the environment manager and the IDE so that everything works together and that you don't have any issues after the installation. Now, Miniforge is trying to give you the best of both worlds by giving you both Conda and Mamba. That gives you maximum flexibility, so you can use PyCharm, you can use VS Code. You have all the advantages that Anaconda and Micromamba had, only that it's free. And because you have Conda, basically everything works exactly the same as with Anaconda before. So if you're used to using Anaconda, you can basically just deinstall Anaconda, install Miniforge, and keep going. The only thing you need to make sure is that it actually connects to the Conda Forge channels when you're installing packages, because as long as you're connecting to Conda Forge, everything is free. Should you connect to the Anaconda default channels, that will cost the $600 a year. That is something I'll show you in two videos, how to set that up. But other than that, it's very easy to install, it's easy to configure, and everything works exactly the same way that it used to with Anaconda. So that is very nice. The last environment manager I want to mention here is Pixie. It's relatively new. It's supposed to be even faster than the modern version of Conda. So just as a little history lesson, two years ago when you installed anything with Conda, it could easily take half an hour, two hours. Sometimes it would take all night to install an environment. Now because Conda and Mamba, they have basically improved each other, Conda got a lot faster but Pixie is supposed to be even faster than that. And it basically also comes with all the advantages, but because it's relatively new, it doesn't work natively, for example, with PyCharm. 
yet, but it works quite differently than Conda and Mamba. So whereas with Conda, you install an environment once and you can access it on your system so you can use it for different projects, Pixie has a per project environment. That can be an advantage to make it more specific to the project that you're working on and you can even define multiple environments for the same project if you want to, for example, have one environment for GPU computing and one environment for CPU parallelization. However, the disadvantage of that is you do not get one environment that you can use in multiple projects. Projects. So for example, if you're doing my Python course and you have seven lectures that all require the same environment, then you would basically have to reinstall the same environment for all seven lectures. Whereas with Conda, you install it once and then you can reuse it for all of them. Pixie also has this global state as an option, so you can set something like that up, but it's more difficult to configure than with Conda. So for beginners, as of right now, I wouldn't recommend it. My recommendation for today is stick with Miniforge. It has the same simplicity as Anaconda and it's free to use.